Boom, what's up everyone? Welcome to Simulation. I'm your host, Alan Sakian. We are at IndieBios demo day number eight. We are now sitting down with Matt Gibson. Hello. Hello. Thanks so much for coming on. Really appreciate no it. No worries. And you just did super well giving your pitch with New Culture. Thank you. Very excited to explain to people what is New Culture? What are you guys working sure. on? So in a nutshell, we're making cow cheese without the cow. Now, what does that mean? It means that we're taking dairy proteins, which are responsible for the best traits about dairy cheese, and we're growing them with microbes. What that means is that we don't have to use a cow in any of our cheese making process. So our cheese becomes more sustainable, uh, healthier, and more ethical. Dairy proteins with microbes. Yes. How do we do this? Very good question. So uh, in a very simple way, we take the gene that encodes the protein that we want. So we want casein proteins, which are the most predominant protein in cheese. And we take that gene and we put it inside a microbe. Now all that gene does is just instructs the microbe to produce this protein, this casein protein. And which microbe? Uh, we can't say that right now. Oh, oh okay, um, so this is the proprietary. This stuff. is part of the proprietary, yes. Okay, so, so a microbe. A microbe, a food grade in, microbe, yep. And you're and bringing in the casein producing gene into the The gene microbe. inside. And all we need to do from there is grow it in a fermentation tank. And as it grows, it begins secreting out our gene of choice. I mean, sorry, our protein of choice. And it's a matter of just collecting the protein, adding some plant-based fats, some plant-based sugars, and making a milk, a sort of proto-milk that we just take through the cheese-making process. So we acidify it, then we add a rennet to coagulate it and form curd, and we make delicious mozzarella, which is our first cheese product from there. Yeah, the video of you guys pulling apart the mozzarella was yes. really great because usually the, the vegan cheese lines are, have a really big struggle with, yeah, with the melting process and the stretching. Let's, let's jump um, back into the, the process. So, okay, so, um, so we have a microbe that has the casein producing gene inside of it. Mm -hmm. It's grown in a bioreactor. Yes. Now, does the microbe itself end up replicating? And, yes. And so then that, it ends up replicating, plus then it produces casein as well? Yes, so um, there's two ways you can do it. One way is where we uh, continuously, the microbe continuously produces the gene as it grows. So as soon as we put it in the bioreactor, it starts producing the gene, I mean, sorry, the protein, and it just continues producing protein as it, as it grows and, and fulfills the bioreactor. Uh, the other way to do it is to just grow your microbe as much as possible so it's very dense inside the bioreactor and then induce it to pump out your protein to begin producing and pumping out your protein so there's two ways you can do it um, the first way is a bit, can be a bit more difficult because if the protein that you want is quite toxic to the uh, microbe, microbe yeah. because it's not a natural protein it makes yes, yes. then um, it's a lot tougher to do it continuously constitutive expression is what it's called so we're using more inducible expression Okay, and then so then you're making it so that the microbe grows larger and then makes it so that these prote the proteins that it creates are larger then? And no, so, so what sorry. What do you mean by inducing? The, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so I'll clarify that. So the, um, all we want to do is we take our bioreactor and we want to fill it with as much microbes as possible in the okay. sense that we put our microbe in there and it just begins multiplying. Yes. So more and more microbes are in the bioreactor. Yes. And the more microbes we have, the more protein can be produced. Yes. So we're going to wait until there's a lot of microbes in that bioreactor okay. and then induce protein expression. Oh, okay. Okay, so, okay, got it. So tons and tons of microbes first, then induce the protein. Yep. Um, okay, got it. And then, um, and then you, you got to make sure that the protein that it's creating, um, that it does not kill the microbes. That's part that's, of the well, that's part of the, That's um, the other part, the constitutive expression, which is when they're con constantly producing protein. As we're doing inducible, so we're inducing mm. the microbe to secrete protein when we want, um, oh. we don't have to worry so much about if the protein is toxic to the microbe. Oh, so you have to in, you induce it manually, and yes. then it's, it produces the protein, yes. and then you and then it doesn't again, yes. and then you do induce it again. So you're we triggering. Can, yeah, we're triggering it. You can only really do it once, um, but okay. it'll produce a lot of protein, and um, from there we harvest the protein, and we make cheese with it. Okay, now now let's get into the process. You said you add fats and sugars? Plant-based fats and plant-based sugars. Okay, and how does this work? So yeah, sure. So one thing we hypothesized when we came into Indie Bio was, do we actually need animal fats and animal sugar, i.e. lactose, uh, to make great cheese? Or um, do we just need the protein? And can we supplement 
the fats and the sugars with plant-based options. And it turns out you can. So as I said in the pitch, we did a double-blind taste test. We used uh, dairy proteins and plant-based fats and sugars, and uh, the class couldn't distinguish the difference between cows with mozzarella and our mozzarella. That's huge. Yeah, and so it really comes down to the protein. Uh, and that allows us to open up our cheese uh, to lactose intolerant people, right? Because there's about 50 million lactose intolerant Americans out there. And even though lactose levels in cheese are less than in milk, it's still, they still can't eat that much cheese. And so we can simply replace the lactose with another plant-based sugar. Uh, with the fats, we can use uh, less saturated fats that's normally found in cheese um, and make sort of a healthier cheese. And the key thing as well is that there's no cholesterol because cholesterol comes from animal fat, it comes from um, animal products. And so our cheese will be cholesterol free. No cholesterol. Yep. And which plant-based fats and sugars again? So um, that's still something we're actually iterating. So there's oh, a you're whole iterating and playing with different yes. ones. Yes. So um, there's a whole different uh, sort of uh, multitude of fats and sugars we can use from plants, uh, ranging from, for example, fats from sunflower oil, um, coconut oil. Um, just kind of the standards that you, that you would be used to. Nothing that's um, too extreme and far out there. It's very typical plant-based fats and sugars. Okay, and so, okay, again, 50 million um, lactose intolerant in the United States. Yes. And then around the world, much it's, larger. It's, 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 it's shocked me, actually, how many there were, um, especially uh, in uh, more Asian countries, uh, that two-thirds of the world actually have lactose sensitivity. Lactose and, sensitivity, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. so it's, it's actually um, because, of course, humans weren't designed to continually drink milk after being an infant, right? We actually developed a lactose uh, tolerance from mm. consistently consuming dairy. And um, believe it or not, cheese was a big part of that because um, the, the, pop the popularity of cheese uh, and how people loved it and kept eating it, even though it made them sick early on, uh, enabled them to eventually develop a lactose tolerance. Mm -hmm. So cheese plays a big role uh, in sort of shaping really human, uh, the course of human history from our diet point of view. Yeah, yeah. And then, so now where is, where are things moving with new culture then? You have 500 samples here. Yes. For, and then, uh, do you, are you looking to take then the mozzarella and get it into stores? Is the so, yes. Cut? So, so it's, um, those are proof of concept cheeses because the thing about microbial fermentation to make proteins is that as you'll probably hear from other companies doing similar things, making animal proteins with microbes, it takes a lot to scale it up. Mm. So it takes, it's gonna take us three to four years to scale, scale it up. Okay. So um, the proof of concept cheeses we have out there are um, more of a formulation uh, exercise where we take proteins, individual proteins from cow's milk, not our own produced proteins, because we don't simply have enough of them to mm. feed 500 people. Okay. But they're the same proteins we're making from our microbes. And we're simply saying, look, we can make delicious cheese starting from pure, pure protein. So we know the formulation. We know how to make great cheese from pure protein. Now, as we scale up, we just need to supplement the protein that we're getting from cow's milk from our own produced protein. Yes, yes. Okay. And then the idea is that you're right there, um, even potentially cheaper and uh, healthier. Yeah, so yeah. We, should, we should get to, uh, I know this is America, but I've got to bring my New Zealand um, sort of units here. Uh, so, so about <laughs> $20 uh, twenty a kg in 2000 and, um, or in four years time around that. Wow, um, yeah. For our cheese, which is starting to get to competitive levels. Uh, and we're talking about fresh mozzarella. So not yeah. the desiccated mozzarella that you would grate onto a pizza. Yeah. The fresh mozzarella that you make by hand, that you make a ball with, that's nice and soft. Yes, um, yes, yes. That can be very expensive. And so we're getting to price parity um, in four years time. Yeah, and enabling people around the world that are lactose intolerant to exactly. eat cheese and sort of thing. Yeah, and lactose intolerant is not just, um, it's lactose intolerant, it's people that very much care about their health, and so they don't want any cholesterol in what they're eating or drinking, which is actually a big um, reason why plant-based plant milks are on the rise. And of course, the conscious consumers that yes. care a lot about sustainability, and one of the fastest growing movements out there. And um, of course, vegans and vegetarians that you know have been- Totally. I mean, I've been a vegan for about 10 or 11 years, and I've never been a fan of vegan cheese, to put it lightly. And so um, I'm one of like, my own target customers, like any startup, I'm sort of scratching my own itch here. 
uh, I really want a good sustainable cheese and there's just nothing out there. And that's a problem because cheese is uh, one of the most unsustainable of all food products. It's the most unsustainable dairy products and we need a good cheese. Uh, currently there's nothing out there that would enable anyone to transition from dairy cheese to vegan cheese uh, relatively easily. And we think that by me eating the, the cheese that is created um, from, from bacteria um, that, that you guys make with new culture, that that is longitudinally, if I do that for maybe 20, 30, et cetera years, that I should be fine. We, uh, it's hard, we don't have the studies in place, but yeah. we do think that Oh, so yeah, so of course. So uh, what's interesting about cheese is that it's already comes or there's already a GMO source ingredient in there. So 99% of cheeses are um, using a enzyme called chymosin. And chymosin is what you add to milk to get it to curd. And mm. then from that curd, you make cheese. Now, chymosin is found in the stomachs of many mammals and it used to be scraped from the stomachs of calves. Yeah. So people no longer do that anymore. Yeah, and yeah. so they make chymosin using microbes, the same way we're making oh. proteins. Oh, wow. And so they use get the microbe, they take the gene that encodes chymosin, put it in the microbe, get it to produce this enzyme, then use it in cheese making. So it's quite interesting huh. that all cheese already uses GMO-derived products. Interesting. Hmm. Whoa. You used to scrape it out of the cow's stomach? Yeah, because it's the reason why it's the enzyme is found there is because when we consume milk, um, for us to, to sort of enable us to digest it effectively, we need to curdle it, and that curdles in our stomach, and that's why the enzymes, enzymes are there. And the enzymes currently being made by bacteria. Yes. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, so, so it does seem like we should be cool longitudinally doing this type yes. of stuff. Okay. Um, and then, again, so you were raising money the, to yep. make the next steps to yes. be able to scale this up. That's the next big thing for you guys. Yeah, so we're raising 2.8 million. Uh, and that's really uh, mostly for us to do a lot of engineering of our microbe. And what that means is more or less turning our Toyota of a microbe into a Ferrari. Mm -hmm. And really getting it to pump out a lot of protein and to grow in very dense conditions. Because remember, the more dense we can make our microbes um, fit inside this fermentation tank, the more proteins we can produce. And so doing a lot of that strain engineering and also beginning to scale up. So once we... Um, get our micro to perform very well, we can start looking to scale it up to 30 litres into 300 litres, and then post uh, seed onto Series A, we'll look to get it into um, sort of in the thousands in terms of litres of, of fermentation tanks. Nice, okay, cool. Mm. Yeah, I like that the, from the Toyota to the Ferrari yeah. of the micro capabilities, that's a really awesome analogy. Okay, sweet, I think this has been very interesting talking to you about new culture and Fantastic. future of food. Yeah, thank you so much for coming on, Matt. Really no appreciate worries. it. Great to have Great to talk to you. Thank you. Thank you. And for all those that watched, let us know your thoughts in the comments below about the episode. Also, do check out the links below to New Culture as well as Indie Bio. Support awesome entrepreneurs, artists, educators, different scientists around the world that you believe in in your communities. Support Simulation. Our links are below. Help us out as well. And go and build the future, everyone. Manifest your dreams into the world. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you soon. Peace. Thank you. That's a wrap, Matt. Cheers, man.